Believe it or not, I've talked to a lot of people about frame rate, and when I ask them what they believe it does, I always end up getting the same answer. It makes games look smoother and prettier to look at. And though visually, a higher frame rate will definitely improve the look of a game, that's not the most important thing going on behind the curtain. Frame rate is very important for a lot of different reasons, but first, I'd like to get something out of the way. The idea that the human eye cannot see over 24, 30, or 60 FPS. None of these are true, and you've heard it before. Our eyes are one of the most advanced ocular cameras in the known world, and you're not limited to such a small combination of still images. If you took a game on, let's say, a 1000 hertz monitor, and went up by tens, you would notice a huge difference almost every time. Of course, as you got higher, it would be harder to tell the difference, and we all have a certain point where we can't really tell that difference, but it's not around the 20s. Lastly, humans don't see in frames per second. We have a constant feed that lets us perceive, view, and record the things that we see, so claiming that we can only see downwards of 24 FPS is preposterous, especially when you're watching a movie and you notice stutter or a missing frame. If we were limited to a vision like that, objects would pop in and out of focus as we look at them. But regardless of the facts, I have a few friends who've argued with me on this, saying that 60 FPS or higher is pointless because their eyes aren't able to see it. They couldn't tell a difference, and I always said this. Fine, maybe your eyes are terrible, maybe there's something wrong with you, but if you want to believe that you can't see over 30 FPS, that's fine. You're the only one. Now what does frame rate do then? How does it affect my games? Well, first of all, we have to look at a game that runs at 30 FPS or lower. Have you ever had a terrible frame rate drop where your game slowed way down and your character moved way after you pressed the button or moved him around? Well, this is because as your frame rate declines, your response time does as well. At around 30 FPS, your response time is still pretty below average, and at higher frame rate like 60, you've cut that in half. Let me give you an example. Let's say that it took 0.30 milliseconds for an action to register, so let's say you move the character forward. From the time you push the joystick or the key forward, it will take 0.030 milliseconds before your character actually moves. Now this may seem fast, but you also have to take into consideration the response time of your monitor and TV, and a lot of other things can factor in as well. For the most part, as you play a game, you get used to that response time, and you can work around it but at 60 FPS, it cuts the time in half, so 0.015 milliseconds instead of 0.030, which is really big and can actually help you in a lot of video games. But some may say, well, this is the reason I play on consoles. The setup is fair, and I will not be slower because I play at 30 FPS while you play at 60. Well, here's the problem with that. Cross-platforming games have been popping up a lot, and this is really great for all communities. It's a good way for all of us to be able to game together. However, this will be present if you play against PC gamers. Now this is not going to mean that the PC gamers will win every time. Honestly, the reaction time doesn't help you play the game with more skill, it's just more responsive. However, if you'd like to start gaming at 60 FPS but you don't want to spend more than a console's price, it's easy. There are a ton of low budget PCs out there, and I've made four of them for my friends. I'll link you to a few of them in the description for you guys. Now what's cool about this is you can adjust the settings as you like, but you might be around medium or high settings, which shouldn't matter because normally the lowest settings on PC are the default settings on console. The only difference is you'll actually be able to play at 60 FPS, and so long as you're playing above low settings, you're at a higher quality than your consoles are. Now another part of frame rate that a lot of us PC gamers despise is motion blur. Motion blur is one of the most annoying features that video games have. Motion blur happens when you spin the camera really fast, and the things around you warp and move so fast that they look like a blur. Now thank god this is an option that most games allow you to turn off, because at a higher frame rate, motion blur is useless. Motion blur is normally only used in games with lower frame rates, as they can simulate a higher frame rate, and movies are a good place for it as they are also filmed at a lower frame rate. But I don't like my games looking like that. Movies and games are two totally separate things, and they should stay that way. The worst part about motion blur, and this will be the last time I say that dreadful word, is when the game really dips and you have it on, it does nothing but make everything look blurry no matter what you do. So if you can turn it off, do it. 
to you, frame rate may not be that important, and if it's not, that's okay. But don't complain if your games are playing at 15 FPS, because like you've said, it doesn't matter. Frame rate is a huge deal, and we should always strive for higher frame rates. Right now, I think 60 is a great standard on PC, and I cannot wait to experience games on higher frame rates. If you don't know the difference, well, this video is in 60 FPS, and the last part is in 30. You be the judge, but for me, it's not about how the game looks, it's about how it plays. Gameplay is one of the most important things to me as a gamer, and I can't imagine a world where I don't play games above 30 FPS.